Hello, Facebook. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Going live here. Um, it is the 8th, June 8th. All right. Good morning, Facebook. June 8th. It is um, before 8 o'clock, and um, I'm back in the office. I uh, was away a couple days going to watch Justin play baseball, and I literally just spent 10 minutes trying to figure out how to zoom out um, on the camera here. On For some reason, there's some setting somewhere that's not allowing. Um, it's zooming in on me as I um, go hit live. I start to set everything up, and you have more of my background, and I'm more back here, and then all of a sudden, boom, it zooms in. I don't know how to, I don't know how to do that. I just spent 10 minutes going through all the settings. I didn't see anything, so um, that's why I'm so close. I'm not, I'm not sitting on top of the, um, the computer. Um, so, um, good morning, everybody tuning in. Good morning, Joel. Good morning, Melissa. Um, thanks for dropping those comments. Hashtag lives. If you're tuning in right now, hashtag live. Uh, if you're on the replay, hashtag replay. And I want to talk today about the easiest way to visit Hudson Valley wineries or Finger Lake wineries or Long Island wineries or any winery. The easiest way to visit any winery is visit with is visit with Jamie and I. That's easy, but that's not that's not where I'm not where I'm going with that. Um, so, um, but uh, I'm going to talk about Hudson Valley wineries in particular. Um, an easy way. We've got lots of it's a new business venture that Jamie, myself, and our daughter Courtney have started, um, and we're ready to rock and roll in here. We have some reservations coming in, so this is very very exciting. Um, while I'm thinking about it, I just have to take a note here. I have my whole to do to do list here. Um, or to delegate list. It's a lot, a lot of it's delegating list here. Um, as I think of things, I have to write them down, and then I put them into a quadrant later um, based upon if I do it, somebody else does it, if it's important today, important tomorrow, schedule it. So um, what I do here is I just, if anybody's interested, I do a brain dump of everything that has to be done, and then I quadrant and put it where it needs to go. Um I'm not really that productive. I guess I'm just organized and I work a lot. Um, so um, it is June 8th, Tuesday, June 8th. And um, wineries in the Hudson Valley are just such a great place. Uh, we have a lot of really cool wineries. New York wines in general have gone, have just, I don't want to say leaps and bounds because there's always been some good wineries. The recognition of the wines are um, are definitely on the forefront of a lot of more critics and a lot of more um, good wine drinkers. I was having a conversation with somebody last night about this, um, how like things have changed in the last 20 years um, with the quality of wines that are coming out of the Finger Lakes and everywhere. So the Hudson Valley is one of the oldest wine trails in the country. Um, the Finger Lakes is one of, was voted best wine trail um, uh, by TripAdvisor last year. And, of course, Long Island's making some amazing wines as well. Uh, there's 80 wineries on Long Island, um, I don't know, 150 in the Finger Lakes, and I don't know how many quite in the Hudson Valley, 30-ish maybe wineries here in the Hudson Valley. Um, so definitely not as a large of a wine region as compared to the Finger Lakes, which is vast, um, and then um, a long start of Long Island. But the thing is, when you go to a, when you do a day of wine tours, the most wineries you're going to hit um, when you do a day is three to maybe five. If you're with Jamie and I, if we get three in a day, that's a lot. And that's because we're starting at 11 a.m. And then we end up with dinner. Um, then we end up with dinner at the last winery uh, because we're there for this long, I don't want to say drawn out, but we're there for this extended stay, tour, tasting, all this kind of stuff. But if you're going to wineries yourself, if you're popping in the tasting rooms here and there, um, you can probably get five wineries in in a day. Um, unless you're sitting there hanging out on their on their lawn or their deck or whatever. But some people just like to hop in and hop out and get the tasting and go. So even though if there's only there's only 30, 30-ish wineries in the Hudson Valley, you still couldn't get through all of them. Um, and you'd probably have to pick and choose which ones are which ones you want to go to or get suggestions or recommendations. And most people, most responsible people, will actually hire a car service. So they'll call a limo company, they'll call a bus company, and they'll get a couple of their friends together. Or if it's a smaller group, they'll hire a smaller limo. And um, is there such a thing as a smaller limo? Um, so they'll hire a limo, and they'll, they'll, do, they'll do that that, that whole tour thing. Um, but limos are expensive. Um, that's no surprise. Um, buses are very expensive to get a bus and, and tour around. And you need a lot of people to do that to offset the prices. Um, so 
we had uh, talked about a new business venture the other day uh, on the Facebook Live, and we've got a lot of responses from it, got a really lot of responses. And I even was uh, speaking to somebody this morning who was like, um, I want to use your service, but it's not for wineries. Um, can I use it for something else? And I said, absolutely, 100%. So what we are doing, um, Jamie, myself, and Courtney, our daughter, is we have started this, this Your Car, Our Driver service here in the Hudson Valley. So... We can, I spoke to a couple people yesterday about it. There's a lot of interest in this, and people are booking out now. Um, we got all of our paperwork back, our corporate corporation, our EIN number, all of our insurance is back. Um, so we were ready to rock and roll with this. Um, we just didn't know how soon it was going to take, so we couldn't take any reservations right away. But literally, if you called us and wanted to do something this weekend, we might be able to do something for you. Um, just have, have, we have drivers on standby ready to go and do this. So um, how this works is it's your car. Our driver, we send the driver to you, to your house, to your Airbnb, to your office, to the destination that you want to start. And this works great if you're two people, four people, or even up to seven people if you have a minivan or a third row. If you have a third row in your SUV, um, this you can put seven people in there. This works perfect. So our driver, licensed, insured. Um, all of our drivers, either they have CDLs or off-duty cops, um, police officers, or their um, um, bus drivers. Uh, so they have all clean records, they're all vetted and checked. Um, our insurance covers them to drive your car. Um, so fully insured, fully licensed for this. And um, it's a big savings. It's $42 an hour compared to the standard rates of $85 and up an hour. Um, so, and the nice thing about this is um, you go where you want. Um, or if you don't know where you want to go, Jamie and I or Courtney will help you pick out the winery. So for example, if you said to us, you know, we want to go to a winery that has some a good lunch, uh, a good cafe or something, we're going to say, okay, you go to winery X, Y, and Z for that. Okay, we want to go to a winery where we can lounge out on the lawn, um, listen to music, and bring our own picnic lunch. We're like, okay, these wineries here will allow you to bring in your own food. Then you might say, well, we want to go to a winery that also has spirits um, as well as wine. And then we're like, okay, well, now this winery here is also a distillery, so this is where you want to go. So now we want to go to wineries that are like next to each other so we're not spending all this time driving. Ah, perfect. These four wineries happen to be within five minutes of each other, so let's get you to this part of the Hudson Valley. So any questions that may arise or any help or concerns um, that you have, we're here to help you go through this. Um, so um, good morning, everybody tuning in. Hi, Connie. Thanks for dropping that comment live. So um, there's Hudson Valley is just really, really a great place to 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 taste wine. Now Hudson Valley is getting busy uh, because we're right near New York City, and all the New York City people were coming up into the Hudson Valley and um, and um, and bringing in, you know, obviously making a lot of places busy. So some wineries are currently expanding their outdoor offerings, seatings, things like this. Um, wineries that never even had a lawn or minimal lawn now have a large lawn to, to hang out on. Some of them are bringing in entertainment, which is great. People have been asking us about Bashakil. Um, Bashakil Winery is opening up again in like two weeks. They didn't open it all last year. It was just um, you could pick their wines up. Um, they leave it outside for you. So Paul and Samara are opening up this year. Um, Bashakil is a really fun winery. Um, good morning, Alby. Alby, do you have any um, – are you playing at Bashakil at all this year, Alby? Um so I'll be uh, Bash is great because they have music there. A few other wineries have music too. Rabibero. A few other wineries definitely have music um, and provide entertainment. So literally, you might say to say to us, Marcus or Courtney, I want to go to a winery where we're going to spend all day there. We don't want to wine hop around. We want to take a, a lunch. We want to sit on the lawn, and we want to spend literally four hours um, and spend. All afternoon there, five hours. We spend all afternoon. We don't want to hop. What's your recommendation? And we're going to say this, this, or this winery. So the advantage of the advantage of using us uh, for this service, and there is no other service that exists like this here in the Hudson Valley, by the way, or that at least I know of. I've talked to a lot of the wineries, Courtney and I, and nobody else is doing anything like this. Uh, so this is exciting. And we modeled this business from uh, Main Street Drivers, a company up in um, in the Finger Lakes. Uh, very, very successful company. He sends out a lot of drivers every weekend. And I asked him because I wanted to start recommending him here in the Hudson Valley for some of our guests in our Airbnb. And he goes, Marcus, I'm not in the Hudson Valley. I don't exist in the Hudson Valley. He goes, I don't know anything about the Hudson Valley. I'm not going to go into an area that I don't know. He goes, I do Long Island and I do um, Walla Walla and I think Yakima. And he goes, I know these regions very well. He goes, but I don't know the Hudson Valley. So I'm not going to expand into a region I don't know. 
And that's when the light bulb went off. I said, okay, um, do you mind if I do it? And so James was like, absolutely, I'll help you. You stay in your territory, I stay in my territory. You know, we're friends, and and so that's how that's working. So James has helped us get set up on this. Um, and um, that is, uh, that's the story with that. So there is no other service like this. There are limos, there are buses, um, many smaller buses, bigger buses, coach buses, um, literally 12 person buses you can you can hire to take you now here's where most of these companies fall very 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 short and a lot of them have great drivers great vehicles uh they're pricey you're gonna pay seven eight nine hundred dollars for the day to have somebody bust you around like this limos too you know six hundred dollars and up so what these companies do is they're not specifically in the wine business unless you call something like the like the little wine bus um, Tanya's great. She's been doing this a long time. These people drive people to the airport. They drive people, you know, wherever they need to go. They're, they, if, a, if a guy's, not, if a guy's, if a driver picks you up this Saturday, chances are the night before he was doing a prom. If it's June, or well, the night before he was doing a wedding or whatever. If you're touring around on a Sunday, the night before he was doing a wedding. So they don't really specialize in just the wineries, and. We do. We specialize in wineries. We have relationships with all the wineries. We buy their wine. We know the owners. Um, so that's where we really come in and say, okay, we can really help you make a great tour. Uh, and so if you're going to ask a question about wineries, we can answer them. If you're going to ask your driver from one of these other companies, like, you know, what um, – um, like what winery? You know, we have extra time right now. What winery should we go to next? You know, the driver's going to look, look, pull up his phone and be like, well, on Google it says this winery is five miles from here. You know, we're going to say, okay, we know what winery you can go to, and let's get you into this winery and 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 have a good time based on what you're looking for. So we're super excited to start this um, because it's just it's a direct um, extension of our restaurant here, direct extension of our restaurant, and um, that's what we love doing. So. Um, that is it, folks. Um, also, I want to talk about something else. Maybe I'll make another Facebook Live out of it. I posted something on my personal page yesterday that, you know, it gets me angry. There's We go to a lot of restaurants, Jamie and I. We go to a lot of places because um, we, when we travel, we're out and about. And we love, Jamie and I love to go out and get a bite to eat and relax away from here. Um, you know, so we love to. And we do, uh, let's all research and development. You know, we get ideas of what to do. Um one thing that drives us crazy is when we go when we go into a restaurant and they advertise on their website or they which a lot of them do they advertise on their website on their wherever proud to support local proud to support independent proud to support independent wine beer and spirits we see this a lot proud to support we are committed to supporting local distiller local 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 or independent so if they say that they're proud or they're committed to supporting and then you go into the restaurant and the back of the bar is loaded with all these big multinational brands it's like i thought you were committed well yeah no we we offer some local stuff no no <laughs> you said you're committed to me if you're committed you're committed you're not doing this doing this halfway a quarter of the way um because it's convenient if you're committed you're committed and you're not offering other things this is a crossroads that jamie and i got two years ago um we would bring in from the very beginning we brought in all the small brands but back in 2004 you didn't have all the options of, of distilleries. Tuttletown wasn't even in existence yet, even though Tuttletown is now sold. We don't we don't buy their product anymore because it comes from a big multinational corporation. Um, so we um, we would bring in Grey Goose. We'd bring in, but then we bring in like great vodkas like Hangar One, um, Liv Vodka when they when they first kicked off. So we were bringing in all these cool other spirits. But we still had a couple of the big brands because there wasn't many cool, small, independent spirits back then. You had to really, 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 really do a lot of work. Um, and But local local just wasn't happening. The farm bill wasn't passed yet. The distillery farm bill wasn't passed yet. Um, and to open a distillery in New York, you needed a significant amount of, of investment to go in. There were some New York distilleries, but they were on the large scale. Um, and there was nothing really local farm-ish about them. Um, some other states were more progressive. So what was happening was... We were like, oh, we have this great vodka, Hangar One. You know, this was the vodka feature on 60 Minutes that won the taste test. People go, I want Grey Goose. Do you want to try this? No, I don't want to try that. I want Grey Goose. And we would do, we would have to give flights of people, like little tasters, say, okay, here's vodka one, two, and three. Here's your Grey Goose. Here's LIV. And here's another another vodka, Hangar One or whatever. And people would literally go through the tasting, and they're like, I like this vodka. This is a really good vodka. Oh, do you want your martini with that? No, I want this one. 
Why do you want the third one? Well, because the third one's Grey Goose, and I drink a Grey Goose. I know it's not any better. I know it's not any better, but and this, these are true stories, true stories. And they're like, I, I, I used to drink a Grey Goose. The other one's better, but I'm used to drinking Grey Goose. Um, I've been, and what they mean to say is I've been programmed through excessive advertising that Grey Goose is something I needed in my martini because it's this thing to feel cool and hip or whatever and to fit in is really what the advertising was doing to these people. I'm like, no matter how hard I'm trying right now, it's hard to get people to drink this independently produced, local and independently produced, independently produced wherever it's going from California or Italy and locally, obviously. So I looked at Jamie and I go, let's just get rid of all the big stuff. We didn't have much big stuff back then, you know. And I was like, let's just get rid of any of the big stuff we have left. Let's just get rid of it. Let's get rid of it and not give people the option anymore. So the Grey Goose drinker that walks in now has to drink the vodka that he says is better than Grey Goose and won't have an option because the, the Grey Goose is a fallback. It's just, it's just, you know, this is not what I always do. This is what I'm always going to do. And so we decided not to not to bring in any of those brands. So we decided to be committed to supporting independent and local spirits. And because we were committed to doing that, um, a lot of these other winery or a lot of our producers, wineries, and solution spirits committed to us. And this is how we were able to do these great tours in Italy and, and here and, and locally and in the Finger Lakes because they understand that if we're going to sell, if a vodka company, if a, this local distillery comes in and they're going to sell me, Jamie, and I, um, their vodka, they understand that they're not competing against Grey Goose, against Absolute, against Smirnoff, against Tito. Not even competing against Tito's. Tito's is independently owned, but it's a massive, massive, massive independent operation. Um, Bacardi is independently family owned, but it's a massive, massive, massive independently owned family um, company. And I think those are just a little too big for us. And Tito's isn't really what it's cracked up to be. Tito's is not a distillery. A lot of people don't know this. Tito's is a bottler. They buy pre-made, pre-made neutral grain spirit. They buy pre-made vodka, and they run it through their their still. They have some pot stills there, some smaller stills. They buy this, you know, tractor loads of neutral grain spirit, put it into their facility. They don't buy grain. They don't do fermentation mashes. They don't cook it. They buy this pre-made vodka. This is like you buying a bottle. This is like you buying a little uh, um, uh, distilling kit at home. Buying a little distilling kit at home that sits on your counter and you can like make like 12 bottles at a time, right? A little kit, a little fun for you to do. Like, oh yeah, I'm making an experiment. This is like you going to the store, buying Grey Goose and pouring it into your distill at home and running it one more time. And saying, oh, I distilled this great vodka. You distill the vodka because you already started with vodka. Well, that's what Tito's is doing. They're already starting with vodka. And then they're just distilling it one more time. They call them small batch or hand batch, um, um, uh, hand batch made or small batch made. He's gotten sued over that uh, because it's very, very misleading. If you go to if you go to Tito's facility, there are no tours because there's nothing to tour you on. There is no grain coming in. There is no silo. There is no master distiller back there making you know this great great vodka. Um, they're buying it from Midwestern Grain Products out of Kansas and running it through the still. And this is one of the things that I have a hard time with on um, Angry Orchard. Angry Orchard is owned by Sam Adams. That what they have over there is just like a show, a show, a showroom where they're doing a few local things. But they rely upon their plant in Cincinnati. They rely upon plants all across America to make Angry Orchard. It's not made here. In the, if you walked into a store in California or Ohio or Florida and you pick up an Angry Orchard, because it's all across the country, if you pick up Angry Orchard, it's not being made here in the Hudson Valley. But when you go there, they give you a, a, the most amazing, fantastic show and this and that. And it's a big company. It's Sam Adams. And um, Sam Adams has its place. They, they, they revolutionized the beer world. The big guys did not expect um, a smaller company like that to to take them by surprise in the 80s, early 90s, what Jim Cook did. He did a great job. He got craft, he paved the way for a lot of other craft brewers. Um, but now there's other craft brewers that are small and independent that would appreciate my dollar, appreciate your dollar. I think for Jamie and I, when we buy things from, from companies, like where's our dollar most appreciated is what the question we ask ourselves. Like buying a bottle, supporting Jack Daniels, they don't appreciate my money. You know, they don't appreciate buying vodka from Arrowwood down the road and, and Kerr Honkson and Accord. They appreciate my business, right? They appreciate that. 
And when we walk in the door there, we're greeted with appreciation. And when we buy from our, all the wineries we, call, we buy from in Italy, when we walk in the front door, they appreciate the money that I've given them and supported them. And they appreciate what you do for them as our guests, which is why when we take you to Italy, they roll out the red carpet for us because they appreciate that. All right. These other big, big companies, big wineries, big distilleries, they don't have to, they're, they're, there's millions of people giving them money throughout the world. They don't, they, how can they, how can they even appreciate? They don't even know who you, who we are. So. We did this thing back then saying, saying oh, we're only supporting, we're only, we're committed 100% to, um, we're committed, we're, we're committed to supporting independent and or local, right? You can't buy independent, you can't buy local cognac, you can't buy lo local tequila, but you can buy independently produced tequila, you can buy independently produced cognac. And so once we, once we switched that um, and got rid of that, you know, the rest is, the rest, the rest is history. However, however... We do lose business from it. Jamie and I do lose business from it. People want to come in. They want a Corona. I'm sorry. They want, you know, um, they don't, they, some people don't understand, like, why we're doing it. And they get very turned off. And they're like, what do you mean you don't have Pepsi or Coke? And pe that, that will ruin a person's meal. Right off the bat, if you don't have what they want when they walk in, well, I don't understand why you don't have Grey Goose. I don't understand why you don't have Tito's. Every bar in America, every restaurant in America has Tito's. Why, why don't you have Tito's? Sorry, because we support something that's independently produced. We support, no, here's a great vodka. Here's five vodkas right here from New York State. Right here, New York State, five vodka, five great vodkas. You know, here's a vodka from wherever, the Midwest or wherever. I think most of our vodkas are really now just New York because um, New York's making great vodkas. Between Arrowwood, um, LIV came out with a new corn-based one. Then we have their potato one. In fact, that's our new well is LIV, um, is our new well vodka. And we sat down with Rich from LIV um, a month ago, six weeks ago, sat down with him and had a great tour. And we've been buying from him since 2008, 2009. He appreciates our business. He really appreciates our business. And we were so rolled out the red carpet when we went to LIV, Long Island Distilling, like so rolled out the red carpet for us. And he appreciates our business. So that's, you know, how you do business. You know, um, Jamie and I are really firm believers, you know, of, of you know, shaking hands. Um, liking the liking the person you do business with is like super important. But going back to people that, that get upset, people get upset when you don't have Tito's for them. They get upset when you don't have Corona. And people flat out tell us, you know, we don't come to you because you don't have Corona. Uh, you don't have this. We don't we don't come to you. And this was very hard back in 2008, 2009, 2010. You know, we were only five, six, seven, eight years into the restaurant, and um, we were hurting. You know, you 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 know. When we first started, we should have filed bankruptcy. You know, we could have filed bankruptcy every year for the first three years because you know it just it wasn't working. When we first opened, this was not working financially, um, and there was still we've still had some bad years. Um, we had a bad, a bad, really bad spout five years ago and lost a lot of money. Um, I decided to go into another restaurant as a partner and it did not work out, and we got hit very hard financially, like very hard. Like they came and repossessed our car, and you know we had to. With all this money, they got our car. They got our car back. I mean, it was, um, got the car back, but it was like you know, really, we're late on the payment. We're late on the payment, and they came and come outside. Where's our car? It's gone. Um, so we've gone through some hard times um, more recently, and of course, in the very beginning. And when you see a table sit down and they look at the menu, and it's four people, and you don't have what they want, and they get up and go walk into another restaurant, that 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 was like, oh my gosh, like we just lost two hundred bucks right there. Two hundred bucks that I need to pay you know bills that i need to pay staff and jamie and i looked at each other while well, this would happen you know this happened more than once it happened several times people still get pissed off about it and we would look at each other back in 2008 2009 and we're like no no we're sticking to our mission our mission is says i said i said wouldn't it be just easier to buy budweiser and have cheap beer on draft and please all these people and jamie goes no and i'm like good because we're both on the same page this is what we're doing we have a mission we have a commitment and we are 100 percent committed to doing this and um and but it, it hurt it hurt a long time ago and it still does sometimes it, aff it it affects but on the other hand I think we're at a point now where where it attracts the people that actually want it all of you that are on this Facebook live right now love what we do 
and or if it's on the replay of Facebook replay, is there such thing Facebook replay and Facebook live, Facebook live, the replay of my Facebook live, all you people that are dropping comments and everything, you appreciate what we do. And we've attracted the majority of you for what we do now. So I think we're obviously long past that cycle. Um, and I have Jamie, and I have no problem, especially during when COVID happened. We have no problem right now saying to somebody, you know, we don't have what you like and we're not for you. And if you're going to continue to dine with us, you're probably going to be miserable and it's not worth it. Just, you know, now at this point, if you want to go to a place that has Corona, you want to go to a place that has Tito's, I understand. But now we've attracted the right people into the business, into our, into our, um, into our realm, into the, into, into aroma time that really appreciate what we do. So um, that is really, really the other side of the coin now, but in the beginning, you know, before, before, I mean, Facebook, let's face it, 2009 Facebook is, 2006 or seven was YouTube, right? So before, in 2008, 2009, in the very beginning when Facebook, Facebook was only for, who remembers when Facebook was only for college kids? Somebody remember that? If you remember that, drop a comment if you remember when Facebook was only for college kids um, and you couldn't join Facebook and, and the people who worked for us at the time were like, this Facebook stuff is great. And we're like, what do you mean this Facebook stuff? Like, we're on MySpace. <laughs> we're on MySpace right now. Like, like some restaurants are like, Here's my website, MySpace. <laughs> it's a MySpace account. And so we got on MySpace, and all our college employees were like, no, Facebook is so much better than MySpace. I'm like, oh, I can't get on Facebook. Um, and, of course, before a matter of time, um, <laughs> since I remember. So before a matter of time, they opened it up to everybody. Um, I was teaching um, culinary at the time, 2005, 2006, 2007. I was teaching culinary at Sullivan County Community College. Um, I would adjunct a couple classes. So I had a, uh, 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 an official college email. So I was told by myself, you can get on, Marcus, because you have an official college email. And I never ha did get on. But I remember I joined Facebook when they first, when they first um, let, it, let it out to everybody. And I remember people making fun of me, and especially Jamie. Jamie was like, I'm not getting Facebook. I'm not getting Facebook. And lo and behold, you know, a year later, she's on Facebook. And then everybody starts joining Facebook. That's why when you see friends since 2009, that's when most people joined Facebook. Friends since 2009. Um, so that was exciting. But we didn't have the ability. I didn't have the ability to go on and make a live stream like this and talk to everybody and educate people and share my passion. So and a lot of restaurants that have this opportunity still don't do it. A lot of them don't do it at all. Um in fact, Jamie and I were in Ithaca yesterday for lunch, and such a simple book. Top reasons your business still has no customers, right? Top reasons you're, oh, am I, am I, did I lose service? Am I back online? Looks like I lost service there. Okay, my connection was restored. This book right here, Top Reasons Your Business Still Has No Customers, and he, there he is. Major city in the in the in the background there, the skyline of a major city, right? Could be New York, whatever. Um, and there's the business owner sitting there sending smoke signals, sending smoke signals. And with the digital age happening today, like there's no reason for a, a business owner to go old fashioned send smoke signals. Jamie and I are in Ithaca yesterday, and we yes, I blipped out. I should be back. Um, and we're in Ithaca yesterday, and we're going through Yelp. Um, we're going through um, Google, and we're looking for a place to eat lunch. And we purposely drove to Ithaca to get lunch, right? We're in Watkins Glen. We're like, ah, we're close. Let's let's pop into Ithaca for a couple hours, grab lunch, you know, sit somewhere nice. And and we're and it's a Monday. We're going through calling restaurant after restaurant that says they're open on Yelp and Google. They say they're open. We're calling. Hi, we're closed you know, on Mondays. Open six days. Open. We're closed on Mondays and Tuesdays. I look at them like their listing says they're open today. It says they're open right now. And I'm looking down. I was like, here's a great restaurant, four and a half stars, five, four stars. Claim this business. If you go online to Google or Yelp and it says claim this business, it means the owner has not gone to Google or Yelp yet to say, hey, that's my business. And I want to upload some photos and put my menu there and make sure my hours are correct um, and make, you know rep properly represent myself. We literally called five or six places that said they were open online because they're not in control of, 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 their, of their account or if they are in control, they don't update it. And literally, literally in the stone age, you know, sending smoke signals. And I was like, my book right now is perfect for all of these restaurants that we're trying to give money to.
because they're stuck. They're sending. I wish I, if I saw smoke signals and like we're open, that would have been better off yesterday than looking through looking through Google and Yelp. We actually ended up going to Wegman's Food Market, Cafe Market, Food Market, whatever it is, to eat lunch. To see lunch, to, I mean to to, to, uh, to eat lunch. Um, and Luann's saying, I saw you saw that for businesses yesterday too. And it is we granted we do make mistakes. We're not perfect, by the way. Sometimes a listing gets changed or my assistant might change something that that's not right the hours or we decide to open up you know earlier on Fridays and I haven't gone in and updated it yet and that's my fault 100% but I try to be on top of it we have a checklist for like like yesterday new special I said to to my graphic artist and my web designer you did it is it on Facebook yet is it on my website yet and make sure that goes into our email today so we kind of like have a system of doing it um to make sure, but we still miss things as well. And I'm sure you could, I'm sure you can go on my, my website right now and say, find somewhere where we're open for brunch. I tried to change everything, but sometimes you miss one line here or there and we've scoured it and scoured it and I've had people on it and doing it, but sometimes we miss stuff. But business after business after business yesterday just was not updating their stuff. And if you own a business, those listings are totally free. Your Google, one thing that people don't understand is Google is like Facebook or Instagram. Every time you upload photos onto your social media platform, you need to include Google. You need to keep uploading those photos to Google as well. Um, I have somebody that goes in and rounds up my photos after the week and posts them away and posts them away. And I literally get emails. Your photos got 100,000, 1,000 views for the month of May, which is true. I got like 102,000 uh, views, which means people are going online and looking at our stuff. The more content you post, um, the more people are going to see it, right? More content, more eyes. Yesterday, I'm on the phone with with Verbo because we made premier hosts for Verbo on our on our property, um, and um, I'm on I'm on I'm on I have I have a special um, I get I get my own, my own, my own um, contact there now, and uh, so I get better attention. And he's like, Marcus, I'm going to give you a hint right now. Every month, put a new profile picture of your ver on Verbo for your house. Every month, put a new one. He goes, because it's going to trick the system into thinking that it's something new. And if somebody's been looking before, they're going to now see a new picture. So they're going to, it's going to, it's going to help your algorithm by them clicking and doing it. He goes, so it's going to trick the system, trick people, um, and get more eyes and get more clicks. And he goes, you're getting a lot of clicks right now. You're getting a lot of clicks. And your, your house is getting a lot, you know, of, of, of attention. But that's going to help you get to the next level. Just, just changing that once a month, new profile photo. I'm like, make i'm like that totally makes sense right that totally makes 100 percent sense um just like on a website you want to put new content on your front page just so it helps google um you know categorize or catalog new content and it doesn't need to be major new content just easy something that's keyword appropriate you know and this and that so um just so you're not your website's not stagnant some people opened up built a website in 2009 and it's still the same website um same content same images it's stagnant um, it's a very stagnant website, so that's one of the keys is keeping it fresh and um, you know and and keeping it keeping it um, current. All right, folks, that is it. I gotta go make some fresh grapefruit juice. And then I'm it's Tuesdays. Tuesdays is my day where I work with all of our coaching clients. So I'm on the phone one after another after another after another until this afternoon, and then we have a salesperson coming um, from one of our favorite Italian importing companies. So. Um, um, that'll be a nice afternoon and then Jamie and I will do our Facebook wine time live later and then I have my coaching call tonight where I get on and learn from my business coach uh, the tips tricks techniques for Jamie and I and Courtney to be successful so um, busy busy day even though we're closed on Tuesdays I've been here since in the office since 550 um, got a lot of stuff done and Joel was saying old school here's my here's my list uh, of stuff I have to do today. I created a whole list, and then we, I do a brain dump, and then I go on to and put it in quadrants of what I delegate, what I have to do, what uh, what I what I have to do tomorrow, what must be done today to get on. But really, today is co coaching, working with clients. Okay, Luann, got to run. Thank you. Thank you everybody for tuning in. We really appreciate it. And honestly, thank you truly for your support. Um, we value your dollar, um, and the people that we give that dollar to value it as well, just so everybody knows that every single person we do business with on wine spirits the beer realm a lot of our food producers they appreciate that dollar too because we all have choices we all definitely have choices of where our money goes and that's the real power is voting with your wallet um i've always said that casting the real vote is with your wallet um that makes it that makes the biggest difference all right hope to see everybody soon um whether it's here virtually or whether it's here in person um 
tag tag a friend in this for this video or whatever. Um, and if anybody wants a salmon deal, by the way, if anybody still says, well, I missed the salmon deal, call today and we'll get you on the salmon deal. I have more new updated. We sold almost 500 pounds of salmon last week. Some people are picking up today almost 500 pounds of frozen wild coho portioned out. There's six, seven ounce portions of salmon. Um, we sold f close to 500 pounds. Today's shipment that's coming in will we'll hit five, we'll hit 500 pounds. So thank you, everybody. A lot of you have a lot of really awesome salmon in your freezer now for the summer. Um, enjoy that. Um, so we discounted that really, really heavily uh, and didn't want to make as much money on it. Um, so uh, people wanted you to have good, healthy food. All right, folks, I'd rather get 10 or $20 from you than then try to, you know, get the whole 80 bucks from you uh, for the full case. So that was the story with that. All right, folks, thanks for tuning in. We appreciate it, and we'll talk to you later.